so Felix has a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is replace this caliper, replace the wheel seals, and just kind of go through the front axle. Make sure everything's good, happy, healthy. <coughs> um, we took off the tires, obviously, and we've ruined some wheel studs, so we will be replacing those while we're at it. You will notice that we've got spacers here. It's because we have an IFS housing in the rear, V6 housing, three inches wider than a stock, excuse me, than a stock 79. Uh, so we have to put inch and a half spacers in the front to make the wheels sit out correctly to match the rears. Uh, so let's get tearing it down. To stop this world from spinning Like Superman you were the only one to find The strength in all that I was dealing with This life like kryptonite And if you keep me close Every minute in this hourglass Um, we had a trail gear kit, rebuild kit, um, for the axle. We've been just sitting on it forever, um, planning on pulling the diff and rebuilding the diff, and then doing the whole axle. It's working out that we're just going to rebuild the axle with the diff as is. So, so we're using our trail gear kit for that. It's pretty affordable. It comes with every gasket you could possibly need. It's pretty good quality in my mind. And just simple peace of mind for when we go. I can feel I'm changing. I don't know. Alright, so there's my old seal right there. Pulled out, got out. New one. Um, the auto parts store down the street from us didn't have a Toyota OEM seal, but they did have a national seal. Part number, you can't see it, 710070. Maybe, maybe, there it goes. You can kind of see it. Anyways, same seal as the one we just pulled out. So, all right, so the simple answer here is that we put it in, kind of push it in there so it sits, it stays while you get uh, a bathroom break in and everything else you want to do. 
Alright, so I have a seal installer. That's what this is. And it goes to this little uh, aluminum punch. So they hook together like that. Um, generally speaking, there's a bolt that goes in here. Um, I just decided I'm not going to use it. Alright, so get your seal somewhat lined up. Take a hammer. A real hammer works best, in my opinion. And tap it. Now you want to look. Alright, so the seal is in. Looks good. Happy, healthy, moving on with life. Uh, this is the side that was leaking the gear oil, so this is the one seal that we needed to make sure we changed right. Um, so, nonetheless, hopefully that fixes our problem. Alright, so next what we'll do is put the axle shafts on and start rebuilding. And these are RCV chromoly axle shafts. These things have seriously taken a punch since we have put them in there. We are not the most extreme off-roaders out there. They're far more, more extreme people than us. Um, but for our wheeling in that, these things have done their job and done them well. So, turn out to hit the seal. To get it close. Just like that. And the axle is now in. You can. Yep, rotating. So, axle shaft slides right in. On that, on the, the bell, if you will. Um, it's got two flat sides at the top and the bottom that meet up with the low sides of your ball here. So you just got to kind of line them up and then do a little wiggle jiggle. And sometimes you may have to rotate the pinion depending on uh, if it's lined up or not. So axle shaft in. All right, so let me show you next this knuckle. This is our six shooter trail gear knuckle. The spindle is already on this one. On the other side, um, it was my first side taken off. It had been years since I had taken it off. I took all of these bolts out and that. You don't need to do that. You can leave this on here and take the whole thing apart. There are seals that are inside in between the spindle in here. Um, and we had our master rebuild kits. We had all the seals we needed. But uh, if you didn't have all of those seals, then if you, if you tore them when you took it apart, of course you'd have to get new seals or silicone or something. So, nonetheless, we've got this all together now again. Uh, to So it just basically just going to slide right on. Hopefully. Alright, so just a quick tip is that there's cone washers inside these six shooters. They have washers on top of them that go there together. When you take this apart, leave the nuts loosely on top of the studs here so that when you smack this up, these have a tendency to fly off kind of explosively and you'll lose your washers or your cone washers. These are really hard to come by. You'd have to order them online again. Um, if you leave the nuts on there, it keeps everything together. Just a quick tip. Now the last thing we're going to bring up, at least on the hub, is we went to Trail Gear's Trunnion Bearing Eliminator and that, which are these pieces right here. So they come with uh, new races that you push into the axle or knock into the axle. And then you have these pieces of metal basically that are machined to those races. Um, so you don't have a bearing failure ever. Um, the only thing they do recommend is you grease these about every 100 miles or so. We have been greasing like that faithfully and they have shown zero signs of wear. In fact, we've probably over-greased the crap out of them. So even though it's every 100 miles and that we may cut this back to, I don't know, 200 miles, once a wheeling trip maybe, something like that, it won't be. We will, probably won't do it as extensively, but nonetheless, very happy with the 
with the trunnion bearing eliminator just for the sole purpose of at some point uh, if your trunnion bearing fails it becomes very very difficult and that's not an easy trail fix so can't see it because it's high hidden but what I'm basically doing is just uh, I'm putting some grease in the hub I'm putting it on the trunnion bearing eliminators um, I'm basically just kind of putting some grease oh, all over the screwdriver you missed it <laughs> oh she's gonna, she's gonna show you Ew. anyways we're gonna throw some grease they say that these things never can get too much grease so uh, don't be scared to throw some grease. Literally all over. I got it on my pants now. It's just, it's just bad. And that's what does your hand. Wear gloves. Save your children. Save the babies. Oh, and our dogs. Let me tell you, our dogs. Our dogs are a magnet for this stuff. If they're out here, and that if there is grease anywhere, they will find it. Especially our white pit bull. The white pit bull is queen of finding the grease. If there's a big old pile of it, she just goes and lays down in it. Here we are. Axle shaft's in. Hub's got some grease in it. We're going to pick up the six shooter arm. It's best if you angle the bottom in first and then the top will angle. Oh. All right, and then once you get it set, then it sits just like it should. All right, so as Ashley pointed out, she left the cones in there, and then we had the washers just kind of sitting here in a pile. So we wouldn't lose them. We will put these nuts down. I don't remember exactly what they said to torch the shick shooters to. We'll have to go on Trail Gear's website and pull the torque specs off of the six shooters. We've never had these come loose on a wheeling trip or anything like that. We've kind of even forgot about even checking them anymore. With the stock ones, uh, stock steering arms, they come loose a lot. The big axles, the rock crawling, the whole nine yards seem to just take its toll on it. And uh, we've, uh, it seems to me we've broken some, some of those studs that were in there or pulled them out. We, we looked at options and uh, we went with the six shooters and you torque them down and that they do strongly recommend that you torque them frequently probably probably before every wheeling trip we have gotten away from that it, they just seem to never come loose Ashley does a great thing of after we get everything set up she takes a paint pen and marks it where it is versus like the, the arm in that so we can do a quick visual inspection to see if any of them maybe moved. Um, but again, six shooters seem to just hold just fine. All the ways that you make me, tell me how I find the things I like. All right, and then everything's greased, everything feels good. So I'm just shaking it to make sure it feels like it should. You know, you want to have a little bit of tension on it, but not too much. It wants to be turning so grease seems to be doing its job everything seems to be doing its job there's trunnion bearings you always have to keep in mind that you have to shim those if you take out the trunnion bearings make sure you pay attention to the, sh to the shims that are there those are important with the eliminators and that we had to do the same thing shim them but in this case as we didn't really take those apart apart uh, we just have to basically lift the arm just a little bit just to get the whole knuckle to come off we didn't have to reshim so and they're metal shims so they don't like fall apart all right so next ashley is going to get the seal the ball washer back basically back there seal installed they go a certain way just to give you a heads up here so this goes like this on the hook so that you have the beveled edge 
towards the axle. Metal ring on the back side, you gotta make sure there's a little groove that it sits into. Trail Gear has these instructions on how to install the ball washers on their website, which is fantastic. Every single time I do this, I always have to look up the instructions. Your rubber seal goes on top of that metal ring. All right, so while Ashley is installing that, and she'll show you probably finished product after it's all done, um, we cleaned the bearings, inspected them, looked over them. Um, they're in good shape. Uh, Felix doesn't see that many road miles anymore, so that's, uh, that, that's a helpful for bearings not wearing out. They look good. So I happen to have this bearing grease packer, if you will. Um, I bought this, so the bottom part is filled with grease, and then it's got a seal, plastic seal, if you will, right above all that grease. And you drop the bearing in, and it sits in there. And you take this piece, and you put it on. You push down until you see grease come out between all the bearings. grease coming out all the bearings and that I take the extra grease that's on it and I just kind of mess it around I don't ever put it back I just leave it on the bearing because uh, there's no such thing as too little grease on the bearings drop it in the hub and now I am ready for the seal seal sitting there all right we got grease it's nasty all right we got the spindle on as you can see um, we now need to uh, pack grease into the bearing. So again, we're going to drop it in there. I showed you this trick before. Nothing new. Mm. All right, got the bearing full of grease. I'm going to have Ashley with her gloves since I took my gloves off. Ashley reach in there, grab it. She's going to cover it all up, yummy in the tummy, and it goes, nope, in the way, yep, just like that, and she's going to slide it in just like that, all right, I'm going to take a rag, I'm just going to kind of clean off this excess grease just a little bit, just so really I can just see the threads for the nuts and washers to come on to. Flat washer, there's a tit on it, so the tit goes in the groove on the spindle, slides in, axle nut one, goes in, I need the little, big, big, big yep. all right, two and three thirty seconds, excuse me, two and three thirty seconds is um, what the axle nut is. So, go on, until it starts getting tight, get it pretty decently tight, rotor should still be able to turn, back it off, so go to quarter of a turn, so I usually go from basically straight out to straight up. Should give you your quarter of a turn. Again, hub wheel should spin freely. Take your lock ring side. Again, there's a tit in it. Tit has to match up. The inner tit has to match up on the spindle. Sits there. Take your last nut. This one you go tight. Okay, and then what you do is bend two of these tabs over, whichever two are um, basically in line with a flat side of the nut. 
and the two you want to bend over. So in this case for me, in this application, it is the bottom ones. So take that and then I just take the screw or hammer and just make sure it's just a little flush. It's probably not the most important thing to do, but I don't want the, the nut to back off ever. And you won't either, for that matter. All right, so now they're on there. Wheel still spins. Axle nut cannot back off because that tab is holding it there. And then your inside nut is keeping the preload on your bearings so that they don't wiggle too much. Uh, fully greased. We will still need to grease on both sides. The top and bottom trunking bearings will punch a bunch of grease in there to kind of fill it all back up with grease again. Basically one of the last things we need to do is put on our manual locking hub and our brand new caliper. Alright, so if you all saw, I just used a screwdriver and held one end of the snap ring in and then I took the screwdriver and just plopped it right around the axle shaft until it hit the groove. So Ashley did a pretty good job of deciding how to install it. Alright, final key to the puzzle. The star gasket, which we call star flower. I made that part up right now. Goes in a certain way. And in order to put it in that certain way, you have to be smarter than the gasket, and I am not. Star gasket in. Nifty, right? All right, and then typical fashion, this thing goes in. certain way and you have to be sometimes you just have to flip it around until it goes plop the hub is back together so I need to make sure lock Free, spins freely, there's no problems there. We have this locked in, we should be able to turn this and the drive shaft turns, and it does. So, and then we turn it free, the drive shaft shouldn't turn anymore, it doesn't. What we have left to do now is install the caliper um, with brake pads and reinstall the tire. So, this took us with the problems that we had and that, and on the passenger side, we're waiting on a spindle and some nuts, so not counting that. This was about a day project to rebuild the whole axle. We did pull the diff and clean it all and inspect it and put it all back in. Um, so without pulling the diff, if you were just to do this, you could probably expect two to three hours per side, um, depending on if you have everything or if you don't have everything. Um, so. It's an easy project to do, it's just a little time consuming.